Well, as you know, this week in our devotion time, we're going to be looking at founding uh, father's quotes as we move toward uh, the celebration of July 4th. And I still believe you ought to celebrate July 4th. I think this nation was founded upon godly principles, and I think it was a God thing that this nation was born. And I refuse to believe that the history of this nation is nothing but evil and wickedness and corruption. Uh, I, I believe that God has blessed this nation. And if you look at our founding fathers, most of them uh, were professing Christians. The one we're going to look at today uh, claimed to be a deist. However, uh, the eulogy that he wrote himself for his own funeral, uh, which is in fitting with his character, uh, has this to say. The body of Benjamin Franklin, printer, like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and gilding, lies here food for worms. Yet the work itself shall not be lost, for it will, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more beautiful edition, corrected and amended by the author. Well, that's Benjamin Franklin's own writings about his own passing away as he came to the end of his life. Now, Benjamin Franklin was a deist, claimed to be anyway. However, he was informed by the Bible. He believed in God as the creator and sustainer of the universe. Uh, he had some questions and doubts about Christianity, I think foremost because of the corruption he had seen within the church or the pettiness he had seen within the church as so many others. I have friends that claim the same thing, that have been turned off about the church or turned off about God because of the way Christians have behaved. And so Franklin, uh, like so many others, have been turned down a path of disbelief because of what they have witnessed the church do or not do. Franklin also said that he didn't care much about what uh, one thought, but how one acted. He said, we won't be judged about our thoughts. We'll be judged upon what we have done. And, uh, and, and rightly so, and to a certain extent. Uh, God does take into consideration our thoughts. Uh, but the scripture that I want us to read today is Jeremiah 18. Uh, before we get to that, however, notice this about Franklin's statements. He did believe in a sovereign God and creator. He did believe that there was a resurrection. He did believe that there was a new creation, that he would be made perfect. He did believe that death was inevitable and that God's mercy, goodness, and kindness would be discovered uh, even by him. In Jeremiah 18.7, God speaks to Jeremiah and tells him to take this message to Israel. At one moment I might speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to uproot, to pull down, or destroy it. If that nation against which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent concerning the calamity I plan to bring on it. Or at another moment I might speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to build it up or to plant it. If it does evil in my sight by not obeying my voice, then I will think better of the good which I had promised to bless it. So now then, speak to the men of Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning calamity against you and devising a plan against you. Oh, turn back each of you from his evil way and you reform your ways and your deeds. Right, so what's the point? Well, my point is this. This nation, as I hope to demonstrate throughout this week, was founded upon biblical principles, upon the principles primarily found in Christianity. You may call it Judeo-Christian if you like, uh, and I'm okay with that. But they were certainly Christian principles. Uh, they believed that liberty is a right not given by states but derived from the Creator Himself and given to all human beings. And this liberty, as we saw yesterday, is forfeit if we forget where the right or the gift of liberty comes from. And I believe that we are perilously close to losing sight of where freedom comes from in this nation and the purpose of it and, and the right of it. And we seem to be a nation that is groping. We seem to be a nation that is in darkness. And God, I believe, is knocking at our door. This year, 2020, has seen so many calamities, so much division, so much violence, so many weird weather things, so many weird disease things, plagues and so forth, as you might call them. 
that we would be foolish not to look back to God and say, God, we have done wrong. We have abandoned you. We rejected you. But we are a people, I am afraid, we are a people that seeks to do right in its own eyes, as Judges says. And we are a people who claim to be wise, but we are become fools because we've worshipped the creature rather than the creator. And so I am asking you, pray with me from this day from now till July 4th, the celebration of our nation's independence. And I'm going to celebrate it. I hope you will too. I, there's this funk going around this nation that says we shouldn't celebrate the 4th of July as if there's something wrong with that, as if our nation's birth is something catastrophic and wrong and hateful. Disagree with that wholeheartedly, and I pray that you do too. All real Americans, all real Americans will stand up and celebrate the 4th of July. Our Declaration of Independence is a unique document that celebrates the liberty of all humanity, not just those of this nation, but all human beings around the world, and recognizing that we have a Creator, and that Creator has given us the right to liberty and to life and the pursuit of happiness, among other rights that He's given, that He's bestowed upon us just by the fact that we're born. And I think that's worth celebrating. I think this nation is worth celebrating. Is it perfect? No. By no means. Are there injustices? Yes, absolutely. Are there things wrong in this nation? Sure. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not founded upon the greatest principles ever. And I will celebrate that. And I hope you will join me in celebrating that and promoting that and proclaiming that. Because I believe this nation is a city set upon a hill. Uh, to be a light unto other nations, to proclaim liberty and freedom. But that liberty and freedom is found only in God through faith in Christ Jesus. So I'm asking you as a believer, if you are a believer, to join me in prayer, in praying for our nation that we re would return to God and our faith in Christ and the principles upon which this nation was founded. I pray that you know that truth. I pray that, that you know history and will read history. And not just let revisionists tell you what happened, but read it. Read what the founding fathers wrote themselves. People like John Adams, people like Jefferson, people like Washington. Read what they said. These were devout believers and who were against injustice and who were for liberty for all people. Uh, and I pray that you would come to that knowledge. But the knowledge I pray that you come to more than any is that you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Hey, listen, God loves you. He gave his son Jesus to die for you that you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and, and joy indescribable right here and right now. And in the midst of all the chaos and violence and destruction and division within this nation, my goodness gracious, you need to know, you need to know that God loves you and that he's got a plan. He's working all this out and that uh, you can be assured that he's going to work it out according to his will. I pray that you know that, and I pray that you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Until tomorrow, God bless you. I'll see you later.